Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at this time, I'd like to call our August 2019 Planning Commission meeting to order. Please uh, silence your cell phones if you don't mind. Um, Amber, can you do roll call? Yes. Wayne Bledsoe. Here. Robin Here. Phil Here. Janet Jager. Here. Matt Here. Marcus Marshall. Warren McCord. Here. Nonette Reese. Bob Reitenbaugh. Here. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to just kind of go over a couple of um, issues about how we run our hearing here, just to refresh everybody's memory. Um, the commission will be presented with some agenda items by the city planning department, and the representative for the agenda items will have a uh, opportunity to make some comments or answer specific questions from the commission. Then I'll open a public hearing as appropriate. Not every item requires a public hearing. And this will be the opportunity for you to speak about the issue. Our goal is to have a fair hearing tonight, and I want everybody to be heard. So we ask you to uh, come on up and speak your mind. Um, and, but I, I'd like to get you to keep your talk to about five minutes. And um, please keep your discussion and comments relevant to the case at hand. After everyone has spoken, I will close the public hearing. Uh, the representative will then have an opportunity to answer any questions or respond to issues brought up during that hearing. If we open the, uh, then we open the floor to the commission for questions, comments, and a motion to deal with the issue. The commission vote is based on all applicable state and local laws, the city's comprehensive plan 2030, and the good of the community. Now, another thing I'd like to just mention is uh, has to do with the. Um, subdivision plats of which there are a, a number of them tonight having um i'd like to briefly summarize our role and responsibility related to the subdivision plats by alabama statute the planning commission is the final approval authority of all subdivision plats with regards to the plats the commission acts as an administrative body and is bound by the limitations that are contained in the state laws the city ordinance and the subdivision regulations that we have previously adopted here at this commission. While public hearings are required on each plat, and we welcome all uh, comments during, when we are addressing these items, please understand that this commission's authority is strictly limited to confirming that a plat meets or exceeds specific requirements of laws and regulations that, we, that I just previously described. So before, uh, if you intend to speak or uh, after you're done speaking, can you please sign up here in the front? And then also remember that when you uh, address the commission, please give us your name and address. So the first uh, item of uh, tonight is the uh, is citizens' communication. So this is a particular time where um, if there's something that is not on the agenda, or it's an item of the consent agenda, and the only thing we have on the consent agenda tonight are the minutes. If you want to speak on anything else, now's the time to come do that. So if anyone would like to, please come forward. All right, seeing none, uh, we have no old business, so we'll move on to the consent agenda, which consists of the packet meeting minutes of 8 July and the regular meeting minutes of 11 July 2019. It does not require a public hearing, so I just ask for comments or a motion from the council. Move to approve. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Now we move on to new business. Um, tonight we have a, a couple of items I just want to dispense with uh, up front. Uh, one is the agenda item number one, which is case PL 2019-160 uh, Talmadge Rezoning Rural to Development District, which has been withdrawn by the uh, applicant, so we're not going to have any more action on that one. Uh, then uh, agenda item number three, which is PL 2019-217 Clifton Rezoning Rural with Conservation Overlay to <coughs> Limited Development District with con Conservation Overlay. They have asked to be postponed to a date certain of 12 September, so we'll have no hearing, but I would like a motion from the council. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. All right, so now we'll get back on track. Um, agenda item number two, PL 2019-161, the Talmadge Subdivision Preliminary Plat Approval. Mr. Howell.
All right, good evening. The uh, first case for tonight is a preliminary plat request from the applicant who is proposing to subdivide two existing lots that consist of approximately 16.22 acres and to seven single family conventional residential lots. It's located at 2042 Bonnie Glen Road. Here's the, here's the prox map. You'll notice that a large portion of the property is white, uh, representing the county. As of two nights ago, that was accepted by the, by the city council and is now officially annexed into the city. It also includes the portion of green that is currently inside the, uh, that was originally part of the city also. It will be, that, as we'll see here in just a second, that will be absorbed into one of the other lots that they are proposing. The area itself is, uh, it's to the east of the Moores Mill subdivision and community, to the west of Hamilton Road and is in an area of town where we're seeing a lot of demand and a lot of growth and a lot of, uh, a lot of new houses that have been come up there. Most recently with the Summerland plat that's directly to its south. Here's the plat that they are proposing. It includes seven lots taking access primarily from Talmadge Lane as part of the new Summerland division. And it also has, for one lot, access from Bonnie Glen Road, which is its existing access already. The lots, are the lots themselves vary between, roughly between one acre and a little bit less than six. It is in the rural district. Last night's uh, Board, of Zoning, Board of Zoning Adjustment approved their request to remain rural and have lot sizes less than three acres, more than one acre in order to accommodate on-site sewage, so uh, uh, septic tanks. And so that, is, that was the primary, um, that was one of the primary concerns that the, planning com that the planning department had and have worked out with them. They've also been in contact with the water resource management as well for that similar, or for the exact same request. And here is an overhead. Again, the lots themselves are uh, no more, no less than one acre. In, in general, much more, uh, more spread out and larger lots than the areas that are around them. However, the the K, or the, the the area itself does have a, a future land use that indicates a lot more more intensity than a rural subdivision would 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 allow. And so, uh, while this isn't quite as uh, dense as what we were what we were recommending for it, it is, a little, it is a little bit more applicable than just the rural designation, or the rural densities, I should say. Okay. Uh, pending any of your questions. All right, thank you. Yes, uh, explain again now, it will or will not be on city sewer? It, as, it, as is proposed, it will not be on city sewer. One of the, uh, one of the this is kind of a unique case with the, with the timeline that the applicant and the, has been working with the city on. The, in order to um, in order to zone to DDH, which would which would make it in line with what the future land use is, the ordinance requires them to connect to city city sewer and infrastructure, and that was by the uh, from the from the applicant was not what they were trying to do in order to maintain maintain some of their costs. What they're trying to do, but versus what what is normally required, how far is it? What, what, why could they not connect to the city sewage feasibly? They were trying to maintain costs down as a, uh, as a family development. The, the applicant is here tonight and might be able to answer some of those questions. How far away is the, the, the main line for them to? I want to say it was 600 feet. Well, it, it varies. Go ahead. It was a pretty It's along the, uh, you see how the creek goes? It's, it's running along there, but it's on the north side up there across the creek. Side. And then they are also there is also there was also a connecting po connective possibility down on Talmadge Lane, down here. So, they're not connecting because of why they don't want to. Is that it? Potential. Well, I'm Sharon Stick, and I'm here for Jean Talmadge, who owns the property. That's my mother. Well, we did a kind of a preliminary study and. This area is extremely hilly. There's a drop of up 90 feet from the top of our property, and it goes down 
then it goes back up again, and then it goes down to the creek. And so there's a lot of uh, ter terrain or different elevation. It would be hard to get a, a consistent level for the sewer without digging through a lot of bedrock. There's granite all over the area, and you'd have to maybe um, blast it to get through, to get to the, to, to put in a sewer pipe. It's a real, it's a real beautiful piece of property that borders the creek and has a lot of hardwoods. And we're trying to keep it from, keep it in the most natural setting and keep the beauty of it as, you know, as it is. And not, we're just developing it in minimally um, for family members, mostly. Um, it was something my father had bought 30 years ago with the hope of having the family members come and live there someday. And we were hearing the cost of the sewer would be, you know, over $100,000 because of the terrain, because of the bedrock, because of the granite, and it would just be very difficult to put in. We'd also have to have pump stations from some of the lots that go down again. It's like this, you know. Some of the, some of the, the we have a lot of pictures if, if I'm you I'm just curious because if, if there's a lot of rock, that usually does not perk well. On-site sewage often has problems there too. Well, we have a lot of uh, rock on our property, and like when the power lines came in, they had to kind of blast through the rock just to lay it. But we were able to find, if you have a two-acre or two-and-a-half-acre lot, usually there's some areas that you can find. We found, we, we have a septic system. My mother lit, has a septic system. Everybody on Bonnie Glen has a septic system, and we're all in that kind of area. But you can find... I mean, we will have to be, it'll have to be able to perk, and we'll have to find a way to do that, or we'll be back again, you know. We're going to follow the... Have y'all done the perk test we yet? We haven't done the perk test yet. Lots are drawn. Usually you have to have a home, you know, the site. Well, you have to have where the home's going to be, and, you know, which we kind of have an idea where we would, we would think the home <coughs> would be, but, you know, you have to kind of wait till they... So we haven't done... We're, we did. We didn't have any problem at our house, which is we're on that property. Right, we're, we border this property. We're right there to the right. But the ridge runs all the way through there, and so it was. A, it was a number of reasons why we were trying to keep it. Uh, From the topography standpoint, they have about three different high points. First down here at Talmage Lane, another to the west of the existing structure and then another one further to the west closer to the creek most uh, most significant of those as far as rise in elevation and distance it would it would be about equivalent to uh, reaching the height of 191 college over the distance of a football field and so um, that's the out of those three that's the the most significant it gives you an idea as far as the topography that they're dealing with And, and also, the other thing would be crossing. I had some pictures of pipes crossing the creek. You also would have to have something to cross the creek and go, you know, 35 feet into the, the neighbor's yard to get to the sewer. And it's, it's a creek that, you know, gets high at times, and I don't know how, you know, much we would have to do to try to cross the creek at that point. So that was another thing, just not having the... So if this was um, re if this was rezoned, you say that it would uh, require connection to a city sewer. The ordinance requires a, a connection to existing infrastructure in order to be up zoned from a rural does from a rural zone. Rural does not require that, but it allows for it. Rural does it does. That's correct. So the variance that was granted by BZA was they could have a rural designation but less than three acres yes that's correct the one the one acre mac the one acre minimums that they have in their lot meet the code for the county to have septic on site mm -hmm. and however that doesn't rural is the only zoning district in the city that allows septic and it's in the city now because yes all all 16 nights. all 16 and a quarter acres are in the regulation <laughs> of on-site sewage is totally the state health department. We do not inspect, nor do we know anything about the septic systems, right? That's correct. Inside our city limits. That's correct. We're not responsible for the septic. The state of Alabama does not require 
if I recall, unless they've passed in the recent years, a, a, an inspection of septic systems on a regular basis or actually require any pumping of septic tanks or inspection of field lines. So I, I, I believe that to be accurate. All right, thank you. Okay, this requires a public hearing. So at this time, I'm gonna open the public hearing and those who would like to speak on this item, please come forward. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing and ask for further discussion, questions, or comments or a motion. Move to approve. Um, PL 2019-00161 with staff comments. Is there a second? Okay, I do not I'm hear. gonna, I'll second it to get a vote, but I'm gonna abstain from the vote. Okay. Assuming that's most has been made and seconded. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those who are opposed say no. 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 Let's have a roll call. Wayne Bledsoe? No. Robin Bridges? Yes. Bill Chancellor? Yes. Jana Jader? No. Matt Lavender? No. Bob Breitenthal? Abstain. So two abstentions, one, two, three, four, five. So the motion does not. Well, I can change my abstention. Well, it, it takes five affirmative votes for a preliminary plat to be approved. So we're, it's the uh, one peculiar requirement we have. Everything else is simple majority. I can change my ab ab abstention. I was abstaining because I do not think this was the appropriate way to have handled this. However, since our own on uh, water resource management has, has sort of backed away and said it'll be up to the state health department then they meet our right. technical parts of our ordinance but so, that still only gives us three so I will, I will vote. three affirmative votes need five right <laughs> okay okay I understand. So that still leaves us with three to three, then, right? One. Yes. I believe that's correct. Oh, it, it does not. It does not pass. pass. Okay, the motion fails, and we'll move on to the next item. Item number four, PL 2019, uh, three, 387. Do we understand what the vote was? I guess I want to make sure, Mr. Talmadge, or. Can I ask, the, can I get your attention? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, is Ms. Talmadge or what's your list? Okay, but you're the representative, right? Okay, so for um, subdivision plat votes, we have to have at least five uh, yes votes from the commission, and we only have three. So that, in this particular case, that, that will not pass. So that's, that, uh, this item will, uh, this plat is not approved. Well, we have, it's the vote, and then we have some issues that commissioners have uh, individually. That that's why they voted that way. But we have to have five votes before it will pass, and it, it did not. We had three uh, pass. We had three yes and three no. Okay. So uh, on to agenda item number four, 2019, 387. Uh, can I on, on that same thing? I might suggest that we have one of our future meetings have some communication with with water resource management to t discuss any any are they fully in you know endorsing that technique okay within the city limits yeah it's, especially since this failed to pass we might see something again so just kind of inquiring as to the potential policy implications of that from a water resource manager that that's we can certainly have arranged that uh, uh, 387, the Cotswolds Phase 3 Preliminary Plat Approval. Mr. Kipp. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, this is a preliminary plat request uh, consisting of performance lots, 84 single-family detached lots, uh, four open space lots, and one lot for future development. 
The property owner is Richard Starr and James L. Starr, LLC. Their authorized representative is Blake Rice of Barrett Simpson Incorporated. The subject property is zone DDH um, to the basically south of Richland Road um, to the west of previous phases of the Cotswold. The Cotswold has a fairly long history um, going back to 2004. The um, preliminary plat shows, as I said, 84 single family detached lots with several open space lots as well as the uh, creek running through a large part of the property. The uh, development would require a crossing and staff is recommending approval based on that the plat meets all um, requirements in the subdivision regulations. And just to note two things from comments from staff is one, that a greenway access easement or some other form of uh, access for a greenway trail will be required and that a traffic impact study will be required. We did receive uh, some communication for it, but mostly informational requests. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Bryce? Okay. Thank you. Okay, this will uh, requ this also requires a public hearing, so I would like to open the public hearing at this time. Would anybody like to come forward and speak on this item? Please remind us to sign in if you haven't already. I have, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, good evening. My name is Dan O'Donnell. I reside at 515 Haywood Street in the Cotswolds. My house lot is referred to as lot 37 <clears throat> in phase 1B of the Cotswolds. I have two issues for the uh, commission tonight. Um, one is identified on page 27 of the proposed agenda, where the GIS office expresses a concern about a proposed revision to the plat for my lot to include some boundary that's incorporated within the proposed plat that's been the subject of a ongoing legal dispute between myself and CB and T Bank, the prior owners of the parcel which I assume was sold off to, um, to Star LLC. I'd like to address that matter second so that by way of background I can show you the, the property as it stood when I owned it to help lay the foundation for the second issue. <clears throat> this is a historical GIS map that I printed off for the commission's um, um, information. It shows a highlighted red area. And if I can approach. Sure. Thank you. Lot 37 would be right, right here, my property. That is Haywood Street and that is Oxbury in the proposed entrance. Okay. Got it. Okay. I purchased that particular parcel on February 16th, 2017 from another private citizen who had purchased that track of land at a tax sale. I had several conver or one conversation in particular with Ms. Olene Price about the process of the tax sale and were there any anomalies or anything that would have prevented me from having clear title to the property. Uh, Ms. Price has assured me that the processes and procedures in place by law were followed. Uh, a tax deed was issued uh, by Bill English, the probate judge. There was some preliminary discussions with the law firm of Rice and Parr on behalf of CB&T Bank and a potential buyer of the property in the early to mid part of 2018. Our attempts to reach a, a settlement for the sale of that property to include the land behind my lot, lot 37, and the land that would prevent easement through where the stub off of Oxbury Street now is through the proposed extension of Oxbury Street. Uh, those negotiations, even though I believe that CB&T and buying it through their attorneys did not uh, negotiate in good faith, uh, they filed suit against me on June 7, 2018, stating that the process by which I obtained the ownership of that land and the 
procedures followed by Ms. Price's office and by the probate judge uh, were illegal. Hmm. In the interest of saving myself a lot of time, money, and effort, I agreed to settle uh, in a mutually uh, acceptable term to include amongst a payment for the strip of land which would be north of my property to include the strip that runs as an easement across the proposed Oxbury Street extension. There was a parcel immediately behind my lot, my lot 37, that on the overview of the proposed plat would abut the creek that runs behind. Do you have a plat you can, that we can see instead of this uh, aerial that That's makes who's in lock on exactly? There's a lot. It's not quite shown on here, but currently there's a lot that kind of runs just like this. Correct. That's the information I provided to the. Uh, okay. And then you're you're on to the you're to the east there, just above that cul-de-sac, right? So there's my lot right there. There. Okay. And it's this area that would bound the creek in the back side and on, which looks like the south side. So it's that plot right there that, pursuant to the settlement agreement, CB&T Bank was going to deed to me as a separate parcel. I reached out to uh, the Rice and Parr offices earlier this week asking for a copy of the not yet received plat and not yet provided deed pursuant to that settlement agreement. Again, this was October 24th of 2018. I still have not received that deed or the plat. Um, they refused to send me an electronic version. I've been working in Tallahassee all week. Matter of fact, I, I missed half of a day's and I couldn't tell you the amount of money to come back today for the hearing. They wouldn't, they wouldn't electronically transmit that to me so I could review it, which would have saved me a trip up here and, and, and taken up your time explaining this matter. Uh, but I've, I have two issues. One, that as your staff noted, would one plat undo the other depending on which is filed first? That in fact may, if it's my plat for my property, it may in fact impact the settlement agreement, which would require me then to petition the court to, to invalidate the settlement agreement, allow me to countersue and proceed for my ownership interest back in that strip of land as originally um, deeded to me in the sale of 2017. And I'm sorry for being long-winded, but I would ask the commission if they could uh, postpone a decision-making process on this plat for 90 days to give me an opportunity to work with the attorneys for CB&T Bank to, to work out the agreed settlement agreement. Uh, and in lieu of that, for me to file an action, petition the court to invalidate the settlement agreement and then apply for an injunction to stop the plat from being approved and construction to begin over land that I still believe I have a lawful right to. All right, I think I understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so there's somebody else who are going to speak? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Moore. I live at 425 Willow Creek Road. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure I can work this, but the, uh, I know I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, Which, what, what makes the little light? Push the red button and don't aim it at me. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I, yeah, there you go. So uh, this piece of property here is is, is mine. I, and these are the, as I understand it, this is a, a lot, a, a lot uh, plat. Those are the proposed lots for the um, that would border against the western side of my of my property. I really have a question as much as anything. Is there a is there a um, a, a buffer zone required for those? Lots or can those lots literally come right up against my property line? There would be a, a buffer on their lots, not, not on your lots, but on their lot. Um, between conventional, your, your property is probably a conventional subdivision, so we have a, I believe, a 10 foot buffer between performance and conventional lots. So it'd be on their on their property. So is the answer the yes? Lots, the yes. lots will come together, but they'll have a, a buffer on their side of the property. Correct. Ten feet. Ten feet. Ten feet. <coughs> yeah, you, they'll butt up against each other, though. Yeah, but there will be a, um, again, there would be, it's required that there would be a buffer. Buffer yard be a Ten feet. 
and for landscaping, there would be? Especially once the lots are sold, um, realistically it's hard for us to, to enforce it after the lots have been sold, but they, they are supposed to have landscapes. And, and again, just just to be clear, forgive my ignorance here. This is a uh, this is a it, it, it's actually a, a, that that that's created by the drain on the uh, dam from uh, Willow Creek Lake, and it is a an area on which there would be no development. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. What's the backyard setbacks? Do we have a backyard setback in that? Twenty feet. Twenty feet. So that would mean that the, the house would have to be what 30 feet from the back property line or 20? 30 or 20? 20. 20. Okay, I believe that answers my okay. question. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anybody else want to come forward on this one? I have a um, letter from a resident in the Cotswolds that they wanted me to pass along. Sure. So I'm Jan Newton. I live at um, 728 Cotswold Way in Cotswolds Development. Um, on the plat information, I was studying it um, last week, and I didn't see any kind of retention or detention ponds in the plat. And I'm concerned about the sediment and stormwater runoff during construction, as well as how the increased post-development storm rate flow will um, or the flow rate of the stormwater uh, post development, how that will affect the tributary that goes into the Sagahatchee, because that tributary goes directly into the Sagahatchee Creek, and um, the tributary that, that the tributary that goes to the Sagahatchee already floods when it, we get a heavy rain, and it gets way out of its banks, and this would just be increasing that problem. And especially when phase four gets added to that, all that runoff is just going to be heading down there and causing major problems. Um, I'm also concerned about the um, increased traffic through Cotswolds and Willow Creek as well, and along Richland Road, especially during the school starting and release times. Um, there's still backups and delays during these peak traffic times. And um, I actually have a photograph to show you that my neighbor, um, Ramesh Jurganathan um, took this morning. Uh, he said it took him 35 minutes to get from the beginning of the school zone sign to, to um, Creekside Elementary, which is the second one in. From there to Shug Jordan, it took him 35 minutes. Normally it takes less than five. Um, and I, I'll show you that photo in just a minute. Um, but in addition to my questions about the re retention or detention ponds and the stormwater runoff and then this traffic increase. I'm also concerned about wondering where Oxbury Street goes across there and then it, it goes to a dead end and then the street below it is a dead end and I'm assuming those are going to be added, will be connected to another development at some time and that's just going to add more traffic coming through the Cotswolds and on Richland Road and Willow Creek. Um, so I'm wondering what kind of development those would be connecting to, those two dead ends, and how big a development, and you know, because that all impacts this whole traffic issue. I, th I think I can, I'm sorry, go ahead. Thank you, if, if you haven't uh, already signed up, could you please? Yes, I will, thank you. I want to show you that picture. <clears throat> I think I've been in that picture before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Multiple times. So that's heading from um, Cotswold Years ago. out Richland Road towards Shepard. Yeah. This is after Richland Road has already been, you know, widening right. and turn lanes put in. And when was that picture taken? This morning. But um, yeah, other neighbors have said it's not just the beginning of school week, school year. It's like this often, which it might be a little more exaggerated today because of the first day of classes. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, anybody else like to speak on this item? Come on forward. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Michael Moore as well, coincidentally. Mr. Moore's my neighbor. We, we, uh, we have a little gravel driveway and it's just the two of us. So uh, <laughs> our mail gets mixed up quite often. But I have just a, really a short question. And, and so this is uh, Mr. Moore's, this, this is his property there, but it's kind of our view as well. And I'm just trying to see with those wetlands if there's 
uh, if there's plans at all in the development, just if, are they going to clear any of this stuff? Is it with easements? Is there going to be access to this? Or I'm just trying to see what they're going to do to the forest that's there right now. Is there plans to, to tear any of that down or with the construction? That's so. open space, right? Yeah. I mean, where all the wetlands are? Yeah, there's a lot of lot of wetland and floodplain on that property. You can see, obviously, that it's it's you know been fairly carefully designed around. That it, there, all, there are also open space requirements, but... Um, I think the staff can handle some of the traffic questions. I think the question about about the detention and the the treatment of the open space should be most appropriately be addressed by the applicant's representative. Okay. Um, okay. We can do that after. We yeah. So just I guess the, that's lot 85, it is, and so that if there's there's zone A, E, and zone X. And as as I read this, this is kind of my first time reading it. But uh, are those can those be wiped out clear? Or are they going to try to keep trees up? That's that's kind of the question. So. Okay. We'll 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 get the uh, representative to. Sorry. Speak to that. Thank you. Anybody else? Hello, my name is Susan Griffith. I live at 538 Haywood Street in Phase 1B of the Cotswolds. I also own property at 821 Addison Court in Lundy West, which is also off of Richland Road. Um, I'd like to second what my neighbor said this morning. I left my uh, property at Lundy West at 735 and got to Richland Road, the red light at Shug Jordan, um, at 8 o'clock. I have also left my house and tried to go through Willow Creek in the mornings to get out and sometimes sat in a line of 30 cars deep trying to make a left turn onto Highway 14. So I understand a traffic study will be conducted. Or is that a condition of the approval? Um, can you please elaborate on what that process looks like and what what realistically we can expect in terms of infrastructure improvements to 84 new homes are not going to help the situation at all, especially if the school district won't bus from any of the subdivisions on Richland Road to these elementary schools because they are less than two miles. We'll have the uh, staff address that they're going to talk a little bit about traffic and the traffic study and how that's all going to grow over time. So we'll, we'll have some input from them. Great. Thank you. Okay. Hey, thanks. Hi there. Hey. My name is Lindsay Smith and I live in the Oaks at Cotswolds, part of the Cotswolds neighborhood. Um, I just wanted to reiterate about the traffic, not only on Richland, but inside the neighborhood where our children now have the ability to play on the streets. Um, because this new proposed development has no access directly to Richland, they would have to come through our neighborhood to access their homes or the neighborhood in Willow Creek. Um, so I just wanted to voice my concern. I don't know the answer for it, but with the future expansion beyond this phase, I'm just concerned that it would really change the, the environment of the neighborhood and the safety of our children. Thank you. What else? My name is Richard Petoskovic. I live at 581 Cross Creek Road. I'm also concerned about the traffic. Uh, it's really a pain in the butt, to be honest. <laughs> uh, and I agree with the, the two others who also mentioned the traffic problem. And uh, I've seen 25 cars trying to go from uh, uh, to uh, make a left turn there on uh, uh, on uh, Highway 14, and there's traffic both ways early in the morning, especially around between 7.15 and 7.30. And I think we also have to consider the future where it's supposed to be a new high school there in that subdivision. That's really going to be murder, and we have to take that into consideration. And with 84 new single-family plots, you, and most families there have two cars, you're talking about another 150 cars uh, coming in and out all the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, I uh, walk a dog on Cross Creek Road, and uh, it's, uh, there's a sign there, not far from my house, you know, it speeds up to 25 miles an hour. Nobody does 25 miles an hour. They're doing 35, sometimes 40 miles an hour coming down the street. I'm nervous with the dog, because the dog's only, uh, you know, 15 months old. So that's just another thing to consider. And even uh, coming into, uh, on Richwin Road, when you come to, uh, uh, Shug Jordan, there's like four lanes. If you're coming down, two lanes go to the left, one goes straight ahead, one goes to the right, 
but there's two traffic signals, it, and you have a green light, two green lights on at one time, and if you're not aware that you have to pay attention that those only go, one goes, one lane goes straight and the other goes right, you're gonna, you're gonna be making, a, you know, a, a ter OF turn there. And I've, I've done that myself the first time it happened. I couldn't believe it. Uh, because it's easy to get discombobulated, especially not only during the day, but at night. And so uh, it, it, it's a danger that I think uh, the traffic is really a problem that has to be taken into consideration. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> Roy Smith. Um, I live at a 124 Willow Creek Road, which is the intersection of Willow Creek and Deer Run. And I'm going to reiterate what the other people have said about the traffic. I made a mistake this morning about coming back to the house about 7.30. And it took me almost 45 minutes to get out of my driveway in 214, which is maybe a half a mile. Um, we purchased the house, like as other people have said, to have a place for our children to play and move around. We see such speeds coming past our house every day that we had to put a giant fence up on our yard to make sure the kids stayed in. And school's back in, everything's getting worse. This, uh, this lady over here mentioned that uh, as Richland Road backs up, traffic comes the other way to try to get around it. And over the last couple of years, we've gotten significantly worse. So thank you, Council. Any other issues besides traffic? No. I think we got that one down. <laughs> I'll speak on traffic again. I don't, uh, normally I got the freedom not to get out in traffic early in the morning, but uh, uh, like I said, it is bad. In addition to those 84 lots there, there's also building going on uh, down on uh, East Richland. There's houses under construction over there going to come online, so that's going to be more additional traffic. Plus, I'd like to reiterate what the uh, Ms. Newton said before about the creek through there. I watched the building, uh, the oak section was going in and there was significant runoff. It actually turned that creek brown there for a period until it, uh, until we got in the, uh, rainy season, it did flush it out, but it had to flush it somewhere, you know, so. Okay. Thanks, sir. Oh, my name's Bill Combs. I live at uh, 2465 Snows Hill. And if you haven't signed in, please do that. Well, I'm going to speak to that same issue. I'm Michael Bike Golden. I live on 328 Deer Run Road. And on that, you can see that's that one skinny little road coming down in the middle there. Uh, let's see, I don't right. know if this, uh, okay. Whoops, I hit the wrong button, didn't I? <laughs> Which ones are these? Like a red, a red kind of. Is there a red one on that one? No, that's blue. Oh. Okay. Uh, th there. I live right there. The, the, I know you don't want to keep hearing about traffic issues, but this is a serious, a serious problem. And as long as you keep you packing understand. houses back in this area, with only Richland Road and this coming through, everybody from up there at Cotswold that comes to the university or goes to Montgomery or goes to the south part of town, will come out Deer Run Road. Now, Deer Run Road, I wanted to point out one thing. From my, my place, uh, right there on out, that is a narrow two-lane road with no shoulders. It's a road that is in very bad condition. It's, a, it's been repaired. It's been patched and patched and repatched. And right now, it's marked for a bit more patching. And it just keeps on going on. And when you put these in here, all the concrete trucks will come right down through in front of my house. And when they do, the road will tear up some more. Now, it's not only narrow, it's windy. And so it creates a lot of problems. That is a, a residential area with a lot of deer, a lot of people walking. And so this is a serious traffic problem. And, and uh, as I said, I don't know who else you go to. The Planning Commission is the one that is approving all these houses that are being packed in here in this area. So the only solution is going to be when you have some other outlets tying in, some more infrastructure going into here. 
And until that happens, if you keep putting them in this way and then letting them develop through us, our neighborhoods suffer. And I think that's why these people are concerned and all my neighbors are concerned. Anyway, I want to put my two cents worth in and I'll sign this over to you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, well, I'm going to close the public hearing and then let's see if we can't address some of these things. Um, the, the majority of the 10 people that have spoken here have to, uh, were, ish, were uh, concerned about the traffic in various uh, senses of it, including safety and volume and that sort of thing. And uh, so I guess I'd like to start with that first. Mr. Cotton, can you, you or... Uh, Ms. Frazier, give us a little uh, bit of yeah. where are we heading with all this? Ms. Frazier is going to have to she's gonna have to address issue. most of it. The one thing that I do know is, um, but obviously the city is aware of the infrastructure challenges in the north and northwest quadrant of the city. Um, Richland Road, you know, that's been an issue for us for a number of years. North Donahue Drive, we're dealing with that as well. Uh, the one question about these stub outs, this is designed to be part of the future outer loop road right of way. Um, the timing of which is very uncertain, but we're, as, as developments come in and plat, we're having them reserve that right of way for that ultimate connection up to Mrs. James Road and all the way around to 280 via Farmville Road. Um, there's also the city's working diligently to try to get a connection down to Webster Road through some of the property that's been acquired by jointly by the city and the school board. Um, but as far as the traffic study requirements and what that means for infrastructure, I'll, I'll need to refer to, to Ms. Frazier. It's ironic that we need more development to get a relief in this area. <laughs> that's basically what it boils down to, isn't it, Ms. Frazier? <clears throat> Um, so Richmond Road it currently is a two-lane arterial. Um, two-lane arterials can carry around 13,000 vehicles per day. Uh, we had studies done in 2017 and 2018, and we we're hovering around 7,000 uh, vehicles per day. Um, so the capacity of Richmond Road is good. Um, yes, there will be peak delays. Yes, there may be some um, times, uh, especially like today. It's the first day of school. Um, I remember last year when the school opened. Excuse me, could you use the mic? Pardon me. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, we can just come. So I was saying, uh, today is the first day of school, and as um, I can imagine, just as it was last year, everyone, I shouldn't say everyone, that's an overstatement, a lot of people uh, took their children to school as the first day. So traffic will settle. Uh, we experienced this last year. But as I was saying, Richland Road has the... No, no. Excuse me, As I was please, saying, please. Richland Road... Let's, let's um, let her have, her have her time here. Richland Road you currently has the capacity to carry in excess of 13,000 vehicles per day. As Mr. Cotton mentioned, we are evaluating options for uh, another connector at Webster Road. Um, so we are monitoring Richland Road very closely. We do receive a lot of concerns regarding Richland Road. Um, this phase of the Cotswolds that you're seeing is actually very akin to the original master um, plan that we saw when the property was rezoned, Logan mentioned, I think, since 2004. Um, so this is just continued development of what we were expecting initially. Um, someone asked about the traffic study and what that will look like. Um, so as part of the development, we do have a comment that a traffic study is required. Uh, the developer's responsibility will be to collect traffic data. Um, they'll scope that with us, with staff, look at intersections. We'll have them reevaluate the capacity of Richland Road. Um, but those reports are submitted to city staff. We review those reports, dialogue with the traffic engineer, and make sure we're comfortable with their findings. If there are improvements warranted from that traffic study, those improvements will be the responsibility of the developer. Uh, we typically will have those improvements, if warranted, done as part of what we call the development review team. So after today, if this plat is approved, the developer will conduct any traffic analyses, submit its engineering plans, and any improvements warranted with the traffic study will be done as part of that. They, will that study include, because they are right, the other outlet is down Deer Run Road. Will the study include uh, looking at the intersection of Deer Run Road and Highway 14, which is a state highway? Yeah, we will. I need to look at it a little more closely, but we try to do uh, intersections within a mile 
of a development. We can go out beyond that if we need to. So that's something as we look at how this is connecting, um, it's connecting to uh, Haywood Street, which has a direct connection to, I think it's Cross Creek Road, um, but it eventually connects to the outer loop and will eventually connect north through the remainder of the Cotswolds. Definitely gonna be impacted. It makes sense to, to have a look at that, I would suggest. I mean, I, would, I drive a lot out there because of what I do for a living, and I spend a lot of time in Willow Creek recently, and it, that, that is impacted by the, the people coming off of Haywood through Cross Creek and down Deer Run. I mean, it yeah. is a very narrow road, and it, it's hard to get out at 14. I mean, I, I, and that's a, uh, an intersection we, we've looked at for years. Um, the last time we studied it, it did not warrant a traffic signal. Um, so we continue to look at specific intersections that are kind of hot, hot topics over but the years. It's conceivable a signal could go there with it's, enough impact. It's conceivable if the traffic warrants it and the DOT permits it. Um, that section of the roadway is an ALDOT maintained roadway, so we'd have to have their approval. City, because because it's Highway 14, the city does not get to determine that. That's, That's correct. By themselves. Correct. Yes. Oh, yeah. We would do the warrant analysis, or actually uh, the developer would do the warrant analysis. And if it's warranted, we would submit that to the DOT on behalf of them. Did we request that that intersection be included in the traffic study, or is that? Yeah, maybe that I should mean, be part, part, of the, uh, part of the motion. Make it part of the motion. Can we ask questions? No, ma'am. We've closed the public hearing. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can cover all these. Um, so the, the other one had to do with uh, storm drain sediment, uh, especially in this uh, particular area. Um, that's just a, a, a item that gets, you know, there's enforcement rules that get taken you know, into account for that, right? Yeah, so at this stage in most developments, uh, full engineering is not done. We will require a stormwater analysis as part of their submittal of the engineering plans and we'll look at the pre-development, post-development rates. I don't know if water quality is required. So water quality plan will likely be required because it's in the Saugahatchee Basin. Um, but we will look at all of those things once they submit their engineering plans. Then as they develop, if there's any issues, that's an enforcement issue, just go out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yes. Um, Let's see, the other thing that was of issue had to do with Mr. O'Donnell's court uh, concern. Now that's not before us, um, but I guess the only question I would have, it has to do with, we're here to consider the plat right. as it stands. Yeah, th this is, bear in mind, this is a preliminary plat. This is not gonna be recorded anytime soon. So, uh, okay. it, that, it, and, and even that issue aside, what, what he's alluding to is entirely a civil issue, and it's unfortunate that it's taken that long, as the legal process normally does, to sort those things out. But that has no bearing, and nor does the Planning Commission bear any responsibility for the outcome of that process. No, but we do not want to imply by our actions, should we approve it, to imply that we uh, are making any reference to or having any, not presuming one way or the other on the outcome of that civil suit understood okay i'd like to see that that may be part of the made of the record understood it will be whatever our decision is we're not we're not uh, precluding any 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 outcome for whatever that's correct okay. uh, when you get i'm going to talk about the traffic just a little bit okay i guess we uh, let's have mr rice he was going to address uh the kind of looks to the point now that most everything's been answered. That's what I th um, um, Ms. Jan did ask one specific question uh, about detention, and I can further expound, expound on that. that and, then, and then something about uh, removal of, of vegetation yes. around. Yes. Um, I had another area gentleman that asked along about your side of the this area here. I expect detention ponds to be located at a minimum right here and right here. They will, um, other than those detention facilities, those will be the only impacts. That's not true. There is also has been a request from the city for a greenway easement through the property. 
that coupled with the detention ponds that will be required will be the only vegetation in these common areas that we have any desire to remove. Um, this property is extremely topographically challenged. This road is essentially running a ridge that goes through the project. And what we are doing is we are making use of the high point of that ridge and leaving everything on the seriously steep slopes and out through the wetlands and floodplain um, undisturbed. Um, this area right here, I believe one gentleman was specifically asking about this. Well, my clients have absolutely no plans to cross that creek in any location but right here at that road. So all of this should be um, left undisturbed um, and as open space. But as, as I said, a detention pond here, and I expect one here, it could possibly go here. I'm not, we'd have to get into the engineering to determine that. Um, one, um, and specific to some of the concerns about sedimentation, um, these, these are permanent ponds. Um, the ponds that will be constructed here, they are, they are permanent detention facilities. We, I personally have gotten away from the use of temporary sediment basins, if at all possible, because truthfully they create more issues than they do good as you try to remove them. So I have taken to, if it's possible, creating permanent detention facilities, using them as sediment basins during construction, and then getting them cleaned out and using them as permanent detention. Like, just as a, a word, be very diligent in your sediment control, as you know, and you've been here when that has, we've had some very big rain events in the development of this area. And yes, sir. It's caused some real uh, heartburn for a lot of people and a lot of concern. It looked awfully ugly. It was beyond, I think, reasonable control, but please be diligent in making sure that all the measures that are necessary be put in. Yes, sir. To control that sediment during the construction. Um, I believe those were the only um, the only questions that haven't been spoken to. Mr. O I would ask if Mr. O'Donnell, I do have some information for Mr. O'Donnell, and if he would like to stay. I have one more um, item on the agenda after this, but if you'd like to stay, I could, I could clue you into some of the stuff that's going on. We have been not to get into his business, but we were also, because we have a long-term, um, we, we've been involved in this property for 14 years, <laughs> and um, the bank hired, uh, the bank that Mr. O'Donnell is referring to, hired us to do the survey that he's referring to, and so we have, we've been involved as well, so I have some information on that. Thank you. Do we want to address, uh, you said we want to address some traffic then. I'm going to talk about traffic just a little bit. Uh, uh, Madam Engineer, I know you're aware of this. I'm just talking for the record pretty much, but tra traffic capacities based on the cross-section of a roadway, assuming it's two-way traffic, and Richland is unique, and it's almost uh, one way each way, and so consequently the capacity is affected that way and one thing we might want to look at and just to kind of get a feel for that is an origin destination study. They're all originating in this subdivision and the destinations should Jordan and that intersection to get out of there. The level of service is totally not acceptable by the delays that we have the way that it is now and I, I think we've done all we can do with the changing of the signals the restriping of the road and the configuration and i think in the future it'll be much better but until then it i feel like it's terribly over capacity and the second thing i would like to address in our long-range plan the number one goal for traffic is the reduction in dead-end streets and i'm not seeing a whole lot of that effort in some of these plats that we get and using this one as an example, we could eliminate one of these dead ends by looping that back around to the middle of the block in the other direction there. And uh, I just want to make those comments because I, 
tra traffic out there is just not acceptable at this point. And we may have to slow down development till it does get caught up. We just can't let it run at the rate it's going. Now, is that an ordinance related issue, a city or, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, making sure we have the right kind of connectivity and, um, you know, we, we do, I know that over time we've tried to make sure that we can have through, you know, traffic move through the city instead of yeah, having a lot of, a lot of the connectivity in this particular plat is impacted by the topography and, and the floodplain and what have you, where you want to minimize connections. But that it is an official policy of the city transportation wise to, to always require connectivity. And there's very specific parameters for that. We just got built into the issue here for seemed like over time that Yeah, I mean the not having the outer loop road is really start we're starting to feel to not having it if, if, for lack of a better way of putting it. Okay. Any other and can I ask one question? Did I understand correctly that to be able to ride the bus you have to live two, two miles, miles away? away. Yeah. That's yeah. Correct. And I think have we ever reviewed that policy? It's actually the policy of Auburn City Schools. Have they the been asked to review <laughs> that policy? Maybe I mean, it, yes. okay. Yes. I mean, I know it's not your decision. I know it's their, the the Board of Education's decision. Maybe some of the public should go and have a talk with them and see if we can get a. Good I mean, bus that route. might alle alleviate some of the school it can. traffic. For it can. Sure, All right. Any. Interesting to know. Okay, so we have any further discussion, or can I entertain a motion? I think with the motion, we have at least one. If the traffic study would include Highway 14 right. and Willow Creek intersection. And then. Uh, So the legal issue, I think we wanted to make sure. Well, as long as it's in the in the record, I just our any action that we take regarding this subdivision plat is not making any drawing any conclusions about the the. Uh, okay. So the I, I think that that's made clear in the minutes is sufficient for legal purposes. Okay, sounds good. Well, in making the motion. I want to acknowledge Mr. Golden's prophecy of some years ago when uh, we were insisting on the connectivity through Deer Run Road and uh, he spoke very eloquently uh, against that and we came up with a modest compromise but this would have been even worse if we had not. However, I understand and appreciate the very delicate nature of Deer Run Road, which Allison, as you do long range planning on road improvements, sooner or later, uh, that that was built before the county, before it was in the city. And therefore it's not up to city standards, even the roadbed, much less all the other parameters of it. But anyway, with that being said, that uh, I move for approval of the Coxwell's phase three, uh, subject to all of the conditions uh, in the staff comments and uh, that any traffic study include the uh, intersection of Deer Run and Highway 14. Did I say? Willow Creek. Willow Creek, that's right. Deer Run into in Willow Creek. Willow Creek comes out, yeah. So Willow Creek and 14. Okay. All right. I'll second it. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. No. Motion carries. All right, let's see. We're on agenda item number five, 2019 388. Camden West, North Phase, preliminary plat. Uh, Mr. Howell, hold on for one minute. I'll give it a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get up on our stuff. 
Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. So the next case is another preliminary plat. This uh, this request is for a 93 lot uh, performance single family subdivision on approximately 36.6 acres in the development district housing zoning district. It's located just west and south of the Camden Bridge subdivision. The plat itself includes 90 residential lots and three open space lots. You, this might uh, look familiar to you. This uh, similar plat was offered in March of a, op of a preliminary and final that included the portion that you see here and highlighted as well as a large portion that was to the south. The applicant has gone back and redesigned the central or the, the northern portion of that and resubmitted it as another, as a separate preliminary plat, effectively replacing the one that was approved in March. That plat uh, is here. It's very similar in, it's very similar in layout as they originally showed. It does include the Dead end, he, dead end in the north and south, as well as stub outs moving through the, the two stub outs moving centrally through the, through the plat. And it also includes connectivity uh, through, through the south right here, which was one of the, which was one of the, the comments that staff provided on the, the south side here, just north of the, the, the bottom, the, the, the southern cul-de-sac. The, resident, the subdivision has a gross density of 2.45 dwelling units an acre. That's below the, the five and a half uh, maximum of development district housing. It also does have uh, another difference between this and the previous plat, the style of single family homes that are in the central area of the, of the plat. These these lots are going to be much more uh, fronting the uh, fronting the road, still within their setbacks, taking rear access uh, from a from an alley behind both sides of the road. And also, in the uh, the open space lots that it includes uh, satisfy the requirement in the DDH, and, and it goes uh, provides 32 percent open space, two percent more than the requirement. Residential buffers along the eastern side will be included with the uh, conventional subdivision Camden West, or excuse me, uh, Camden Ridge to its east. So pending any other questions, the staff. Mr. Rice. Yes. Oh, question. When you talked about the service road, is that just for that very dense part in the kind of in the middle? Or the... Yes, there. Well, it's. Uh, I'm not sure I would describe it as a service road. However, it will. But, well, the back is. Will it have like back a back? Common all drive. access, right? Common drive access through all. Those, through all those particular will homes will be set closer to the street, and that still within their setback. But yes, and those are private. That's private. Will be privately owned. That's not a correct public. Yeah, it'll driveway. be a private drive. They'll be rear loaded garages. But it's just for that portion, not for the entire. Correct. Just right. through the central section. Through the central section here, the all other all other residential areas on the north and the south will be. Typical front loaded garages. Thanks. Mr. Rice? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, this requires a uh, public hearing, so I would like to open the public hearing now. Anybody would like to come, <coughs> come up and speak on this item? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Ask for questions, comments, or motions. Uh, I've got a question or want some elaboration on these. Smaller lots in the center, based on the last sentence of the analysis in your report. Yes. Preference to neighborhood preservation. So the future uh, future land use for this particular area is designated as neighborhood preservation. That designation applies for any uh, existing and stable neighborhoods, and so that assumes the existence of a. Uh, a residential area already there, right? Since there's nothing there currently, it's vacant land. Uh, we're apply. We would apply the uh, similar densities that are 
next to it through Camden Ridge. And it does, it does include uh, densities that are a little bit higher than what uh, Camden Ridge includes, which is 4.4 I included it in there somewhere. 2.3 or 2.03 dwelling units for Camden Ridge. The, that comparison with the net density of the central portion is significantly different. However, taken as a whole for the preliminary plat, it is not quite so. Basically just making the observation that the lots in the middle of this are significantly smaller than the adjacent development, but also within the confines of what the zoning ordinance allows. But now, what was the neighborhood pres preservation designation is going to be placed on it? Is that what I heard you say? That's the future land use designation of it and the surrounding areas as of right now. Which then would carry with it the single family definition. Correct. And, and these lots, or the smaller lots, how does that density compare with the neighborhood we're comparing it to? That, uh, so the neighborhood adjacent to it is currently approximately 2.03 dwelling units an acre. So this is roughly twice that for just that central portion. This is twice as dense? So the central portion? Just the middle section. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But it's, that's four to one acre. But overall, we're basing it on the overall density. Of if, the, if you were to, yeah, if you were to calculate the overall density, it's going to bring that number, it's going to bring that number down. Which means then to what is that number in here, Jay? It is. It's a uh, gross density. Two point four five. Two point four five. So then that means that some of these lots are significantly larger than those in Camden Ridge. To get that kind of average. The, the cul-de-sac lots are large. Mm -hmm. Those lots. Yeah, the cul-de-sac. Yeah. It, it should be noted that gross density calculation, um, I think it was 2.03 for all of Camden Ridge. It also includes all undeveloped property in Camden Ridge, which is all of their common space and open space and things like that. So you're not looking at just lot, single lot size. You're also looking at, at an area of um, undeveloped property as well in Camden Ridge as well as here. Well, that, love you, bud. All right, so that, that density for the 2.03 include is primarily just for the 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 neighboring the neighboring lots there. It does not include the open space for for that game. It doesn't generation. include any of the rear areas that no. are huge drainage channels and some of them are parts of lots that are so a gross density larger. for Camden Ridge would include open space and other areas just like the open space on this lot does. But what you're talking about is is not is only the adjacent lots. Correct. Okay, let's see here. Did I have a public hearing already? No. Okay. I did. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Good job, you All right, so we're looking for uh, either further discussion or a, a motion. Can we talk a little bit more? About Absolutely. I'm That's sorry. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm... So we've got DDH, which allows a higher density than what is even proposed. Um, and then we have this concept of neighborhood preservation, which is part of the future. Right. Yeah. The, um, you know, and, and it gets... It, it, I'll align those two. Sure. It, it's understandable <laughs> and it's, you know, it's complicated because you also have... You've got your land use designations, you've got your zoning designations, and you also have two different paths for subdivisions, performance and conventional, which also largely governs how these things are looked at and examined. Much of Camden Ridge is, is conventional, um, and, and this is performance. So having a performance subdivision, you're going to expect typically smaller lots in return for uh, common open space. Um, as far as the neighborhood preservation land use classification goes, um, that was put in place in this area simply in anticipation of future residential growth in this area. And, and as Commissioner McCord 
mentioned earlier, neighborhood preservation presumes That's to it's for it's single. it's essentially exclusively single family detached. Because it's 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 designed to be in direct alignment with the neighborhood conservation zoning district, even though DDH is not NC. Um, it, it's contemplating traditional single family neighborhood and surroundings. Needed all of that to fall into place. Yes, ma'am. No problem. <laughs> Okay, just because I've got a little bit of concert, a consternation about whether I had a public hearing or not, I'm going to have another public hearing on this one. <laughs> so, said we did. She's keeping yeah, I know she did. Is that subject to a vote? <laughs> <laughs> so is it, would anybody like to speak on this item? Okay. We'll say now for sure it's closed. I'm sorry, Amber. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we have a, a motion, please, for this one. For further discussion. I'd like to make a motion on PO 2019-00388, Camden West North Phase Preliminary Plat for approval with all staff comments. I will second. Motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. No. Motion carries. Okay, so we're on um, let's see. item number Item number uh, PL 2019-390, Preserve 4A, Section 2, <coughs> Preliminary Plat, Mr. Weintraub. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, this is, as you mentioned, is the Preserve 4A, Section 2, Preliminary Plat. This is deja vu all over, over again. A little less than two years ago, they came through with a uh, plat for prelimin preliminary approval, very similar to this, um, and it expired before they were able to work out some issues. Um, this uh, property is approximately 18 acres. They're proposing 53 buildable lots, three open space lots. Um, the land, future land use for this area is planned development. The lot sizes are uh, keeping in uh, the same as what the master development plan had showed previously. Um, the uh, Is, you know, it's, it's consistent with the master development plan that was approved by the city council. Um, there uh, really, other than the comments that are in the plat, there's no other issues with the plat. Again, it's very similar to what you had seen previously. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. I don't see a representative for. Okay. Um, this requires a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing. Would anybody like to come forward and speak on this? Seeing no one, oh, oh, come on, come on up. Give us your name and address. You gotta make it a little formal. Can you, can you, I'm sorry, can you speak into the mic? They have to record it. Uh, Scott Blair, I live at 2073 Covey Drive. So, uh, the pond that's right in here, are y'all talking about affecting that pond? Um, there shouldn't be any uh, changes to the pond. That's part of the open space. So the, the, this plat doesn't anticipate changing the pond. Pretty standard when we do it. That's basically all yeah, I wanted to know. It wasn't real clear, the, the letter they got sent. That's basically all I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. All right, can, if you, can you sign in, please? Anybody else? All right, I'll close the public hearing and ask for discussion, questions, comments, motion. I move on approval of item six on the agenda with the subject to staff comments. Second. Motion in a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed say no. Motion carries. Item number seven, which is three, uh, PL 2019-395, Sanford Commercial Subdivision Plat number six, preliminary plat approval. Mr. Howell. Yes. All right. So. Preliminary plat, again, for Sanford Commercial uh, PDD. It's a two-lot subdivision that includes dedication of right-of-way into a uh, lot that was created from the previous plat. This is number six. The one, for, uh, one prior was number five in, uh, a month or two ago. That lot, that previous subdivision created this lot here in the center at 2M, as well as its access with this road. The subsequent lot, the subsequent subdivision here subdivides the lot that it created also up here into two, 
into presumably their their final configuration, as well as a this cul-de-sac that provides access to the uh, to the lot down at the bottom, as well as secondary to the the second the, the first one that was created and the previous one. These will be commercial um, commercial lots in accordance with the, the PDD and the master development plan that was approved earlier. And subject to any questions for staff. Well, thanks. Is there a representative here? I don't believe there are a representative. I know that they uh, mentioned that they were not going to be able okay. to be here. So. All right. Thank you. Um, open the public hearing. Anybody would like to speak on this item? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Ask for questions, comments, or a motion. Yeah, I just uh, like to make a comment. Uh, these commercial lots, I don't think, are affected in any way by the airport zoning, but lots that are development that is this close to the glide pass for this runway or in these uh, airport planning area, I'd like to have that map shown at the public hearing so it's a public record. People know where that is, whether it has an effect or not. Oh, just, just put all the airport overlay designations on the map. We can do that. It's a matter Understood. of public, public record. Not a problem. I'd move for approval of item seven with staff comments. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Uh, let's see. We're down to item number eight, which is the 2019 377 North Ross duplexes. It's a recommendation to city council for conditional <laughs> use approval for performance residential use. Mr. Caldwell. All right. Good evening. The property owner and applicant is Chris Birdsong, and he's here this evening. <clears throat> Mr. Birdsong's looking at redeveloping what currently is six properties with six single-family homes on it into a five-duplex development with one of the single-family homes remaining. The property is zoned RDD. It's located on North Ross Street. It backs up to the Le Mans Apartments and it's located between Drake and Martin Avenue on the west side. Here we have a, a, a colorized site plan that gives you an idea of the, the five duplexes and the one single family house to the right, which is oriented north. The duplexes effectively are replacing one for one the single family they're taking away. All of these duplexes are three bedroom, three bath duplexes. They don't meet our private dormitory definition um, and are considered, though they look as duplexes, are considered to be a multi-unit development. For what it's worth, duplexes are conditional use in the RDD as well. So if these were fee simple duplexes, they would be before you uh, uh, as well. Um, got Mr. Birdsong provided some elevations to give you an idea of what the four uh, four models would look like for the five units. And here we have the aerial. You see Le Mans to the rear, uh, multifamily to the rear and across the street on Ross Street. Are there any questions for staff? What are our parking requirements for duplexes? One per one per bed. The same with townhomes. And I think the thirty-seven parking places. And how many beds? How many, uh, how many so beds? He asked. How many beds? Thirty beds. Thirty, 30, 30 beds. Yeah. 30. How many parking spaces? <laughs> 30, how many parking spaces? 37. 37. 37. Okay. okay, this requires a public hearing as well. Would anybody like to come forward and speak on this issue? Seeing no one, I'll close the public hearing. Ask for questions, comments, or a motion. Uh, I've got a question reference clarification on your comment number 12. The following shall be located, our screen shows not to be visible from any public street. And satellite antenna are included in that paragraph. Is that 
enforceable or who looks after that or should that be revisited or Mr. Lassenby, when we build that we'll contract with Charter Spectrum is who we use and and they'll lay all the internet and the, the cable and whatnot and in the lease we do not allow uh, satellite dishes. That's what you're asking. Yeah, that's yeah, because you see them all over town, and I, I didn't want to duly enforce them on you if we're not enforcing them every place else. <laughs> but I know in our neighborhood they are a no-no, and the cable companies don't realize what the regulations are until they've already put them up somewhere. So I just want to clarify. That's something uh, from a from a more citywide perspective. That's something we're going to look at in the DRT process and try to work through with the engineer, the architect, and the the contractor that that we don't want to see these things. Once something's been built and is is on the ground, that's it's hard to retroactively take away. I move on approval of item eight on the agenda with uh, uh, the conditions stipulated in the staff report. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. Motion carries. Item number nine. 2019 386 Mall Boulevard and Warehouse recommendation to the City Council for conditional use approval for commercial <coughs> support use. A warehouse. Robeson. Yes. Uh, this is the final item on the agenda this evening, and it's very similar to a request that you previously heard um, a couple months ago for the property to the west. The applicant is AF Holdings. Um, Don Allen is representing is the authorized representative for the property owner. Um, the request is very similar to the one that was next door, except it's going to be seven individual suites where the property next door was just one. So the building will contain um, office space and warehouse space seven individual units and some of the parking for the warehouse units will be parked inside <coughs> and they do satisfy all of the parking requirements and we do recommend approval i received no correspondence for this request and the um, applicant is not present this evening thank you this does require a public hearing as well. Would anybody like to come forward and speak? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing. Questions, comments, motion? Move on approval item nine on agenda for staff comments. Second. Motion is second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion carries. Brings us to the end. Mr. Cotton, do you have anything? Uh, for yes, us? sir. Just uh, just another reminder about the work session. Um, send an email out to you. I think I've heard back from most of you uh, for staff to present to you uh, our findings and recommendations related to the Cox Wire Road Focus Area Study, which is one of our in our fiscal year 19 work program, which is quickly coming to a close. And uh, I will um, coordinate with Water Resource Management, see if we maybe can't tack, tack on a little brief presentation about septic and connection requirements to sewer at the tail end of our packet meeting in September. That would be good. Okay. We'll do that. Excellent. We, I call the meeting adjourned. <laughs>